Hey guys, what I am doing today is technically an ARC review, but this book did come out last week. Sorry about that. So I reviewed the ARC, but it's out. So I mean, technically, I guess if you're interested in this story, you can go out and get it right now from your library or your bookstore. But um, we're going to talk about why it took me so long to read it, and then you can make your own decisions. So the book that I'm reviewing today is I Kissed a Girl by Jeanette Alexander. It was blurbed to me by a librarian at a book conference who was very, very excited about it, and her enthusiasm made me have enthusiasm for it. And I think that also is making the fall from grace a little bit sadder for me. But first, I Kissed a Girl is the story of Lila and Noah. Lila is a actress and she is on the set of yet another horror film. This time she is the final girl aka the girl who makes it all the way through and she has been getting more and more acclaim and aplomb but all of her roles have been horror films and she's hoping that this film a little bit of a bigger you know, role will get her something that's that next stage up. She certainly doesn't mind horror, but she would like to not be covered in goo all the time and maybe, you know, do something where she feels she can do a little bit more acting. Noah is a makeup artist who, when the novel starts, is attending college, but when a friend says that they can get her a job on a horror film set doing special effects, which is her dream. Noah wants to be a horror film special effects artist. She drops out of college and goes to work on this set. So there is a lot writing for her on this job and it is everything she has ever dreamed of before. Noah is also a fan of horror and she has seen Lila in every movie she has ever been in, even the uncredited ones where she's kind of in the background or dies very early and often. And so she is totally flustered by the idea of doing Lila's makeup, being very close to her. Noah is out and proud as a lesbian. And she's like, Lila's only ever had boyfriends. So she's, you know, don't want to make this weird. Don't want to make this awkward. Don't want to put my foot in my mouth. Just need to get through this, get the hours so she can eventually get her union card. And uh, yeah she immediately puts her foot in her mouth. I Kissed a Girl does go back and forth from Noah and Lila's perspective. So almost immediately you find out that Lila is a closeted bisexual. She's never had a girlfriend before and the few times she's tried to go into LGBTQ spaces, she's been told, you know, you're not gay enough or you're only half gay. and. She's not really had a great experience with that and so she's really, really tentative about being out and proud the way that Noah is. So when she sees Noah being, you know, out and she thinks giving affection to her girlfriend on set, Lila thinks, oh, Noah is a person that I want to know. Also, she's super cute, but she's got a girlfriend, so I'm gonna hold that inside. So Noah's into Lila, but doesn't want Lila to know. And Lila's into Noah, but doesn't want Noah to know. And so awkward conversations and a few hijinks ensue. In terms of representation, this book is really great. Noah and Lila are both also Jewish. So there's some Jewish representation in there as well. Noah's best friend Chrissy is trans and there's a smattering of other characters from various backgrounds and um, people of color throughout the book. So representation is really, really well done in this book. Well done at least to the point of being present. I am neither Jewish nor a part of the LGBTQIA community, so I can't reference that, but it is present. And there's clearly an attempt by the author to make this book really well representative of multiple different sexualities and ethnicities. So that was great. There's also a really interesting suspense element to this book that I definitely did not expect. I don't want to spoil anything because it kind of comes up on you slowly, but it makes the ending way more cinematic than I really expected it to be and, and really interesting. And it's 
kind of subtle and kind of there in the background, but again, a suspense element that I wasn't expecting that I really enjoyed, even if it did kind of create like this really wild like climax, it was crazy. But it was good and it added another layer to the romance novel. Okay, so here, here's the thing. It is supposed to be endearing that Noah, who Lila idolizes as kind of like a really sure of herself cool girl, you know, dyed hair, horror t-shirts, like the whole thing, is constantly putting her foot in her mouth and saying the wrong things. I understand that. But the thing is that the way that Noah is often putting her foot in her mouth is she is criticizing the kind of books that Lila likes to read. She judges her for reading romance novels. It, she criticizes, you know, Lila's, her profession. At a certain point she says, well, you know, Lila just does too much acting. She doesn't know how to be a real person. And she'll say all this to Lila's face and it, of course, hurts Lila, who is going through her own, like, you know, trying to be a professional actress, trying to be more comfortable in her identity. And I mean, Lila says that it hurts her and Noah says that she's sorry, but like, it's so repetitive throughout the book that it just made me feel really uncomfortable because I was still supposed to be rooting for them to get together and um, really wasn't a fan of that. Also, Lila talks about one of the reasons that she really likes Noah being Noah's passion for her job. But once Lila and Noah start to flirt and whatever, Noah mostly just complains about it. And so Lila going on about Noah's passion and love for her job when we're not seeing it is really hard. It just feels so uneven because Lila as a character is so well done and she's so empathetic and is clearly struggling with the suspense element and her identity and family relationships and friend relationships in a variety of ways and Noah just keeps kind of bringing her down. It just gets really hard when they have like that, you know, requisite fight towards the, you know, middle end of the novel and it's just like, I wasn't rooting for Lila to take Noah back. I was just like, I think Lila's complaints are valid. Noah's issues also just never felt on the same level as Lila's. She does not realize that there's this like thing going on in the background of Lila's life, which granted, Lila doesn't tell her about the suspense element, but Noah never notices. Noah talks about having friction with her parents, but they seem on a way like just kind of overly supportive and like, you know, really just like, want her to go back to school and she complains that they don't understand like her life's ambition but even when she goes onto set they set up like google alerts and they want to hear everything about the set and so it's just kind of like the things that Noah's complaining about also feel very surface level compared to what Lila has to do with on her side so when Noah is acting up it's just like ugh, whatever the one extra thing that was just weird on both sides is that when Noah's boss says that Noah can't fraternize, like be friends or certainly not girlfriends with any of the talent, Noah says to Lila, hey, I have a lot writing on this job, so let's just kind of hold off until after production is done and then we can explore whatever this is and I won't be in danger of losing my job, which I gave up everything for. Like I dropped out of school, like I need this job, I can't be blackballed which to me sounds like a fine thing. And then first of all, the one time that Denise kind of interrupts them and Noah's like blah and kind of runs away from Lila, Lila's like, who could ever handle that kind of rejection all the time? And you're like, what? <laughs> and then there's a really fast turnaround where Noah decides it doesn't matter anyway. So I don't know. This book is super cute and it has so many elements that I really wanted to enjoy and Lila as a character is just so good and I just want to wrap my arms around her, like wrap her in a burrito blanket and tell her everything is gonna be okay. 
Noah's kind of Noah. And it just kind of put me off the entire novel. And some things like the issue with Noah's boss were just weird and then resolved really quickly. And for a book that felt longer than I think it is, it also felt too short. I don't even know how to explain that, but I don't know. I really do encourage you to read the book for yourself and make your own decisions. I just feel like Noah rubbed me the wrong way and I just couldn't shake it for the rest of the book and it made it really hard for me to want her to get together with a character I really loved. So do with that what you will. Again, get it from your library, check it out, and then come back to this review and tell me what you think because maybe, you know, I'm wrong. Maybe Noah has redeeming qualities that I didn't notice because I didn't want to. I knew that that's definitely something where when you just really love one character and like another character like pinches them a little bit, you're like, oh, other character is the worst because they hurt my baby. I don't, I don't know. I'm willing to be wrong. I accept that I might be. But uh, yeah, you'll have to come back and tell me. So that is my ARC review of I Kissed a Girl by Jeanette Alexander, now available wherever books are got. <laughs> so come back and tell me if you think I'm wrong, if you've already read it, let me know. Otherwise, I will see you guys soon.